Hello, scholars. Dugras here with Dugras Reports. Welcome to the very first presentation in the Dugras Reports lecture series. This is a very special live stream. Think of it like a classroom. At first, the live portion will only be open to my channel members, and I would request that you only ask questions that directly apply to the topic at hand. What is that topic? Today's topic is the limitations of the Citigroup credit cards and their ecosystem, or you could call it the case against Citi. That's what we'll be talking about today. Um, there's just a couple disclaimers. First of all, I will let you know this is an advanced level class. This is a 400 level credit card class. If you are a beginner or new to credit cards, I will admit right up front, you might want to watch some of my other videos or some basic introductory videos from other credit card content creators before diving into something that's rather advanced like this. It will just be me sitting and talking. There may be a few questions as we go, or there might not be any at all. So uh, again, we'll be talking about city credit cards and their limitations. Before I dive into the topic at hand, though, on this particular YouTube channel, I talk about finding epic value, including but not limited to credit card rewards for the average American. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel and click the thumbs up button. I would also encourage you to consider becoming a member of the channel. That is a Dugras diehard. That's my one and only membership level. And it's only $3 a month. You can cancel at any time. One of the benefits is that you'll be allowed to participate in the chat for future live streams of the Dugras lecture series. I do plan more in the future. We'll see how it goes. Um, you can also watch some of my members only videos. This one will start out members only and after a few days release to the public. I also have about 15 other videos that are fully created videos that are topics that are either too nerdy or too sensitive for the general YouTube algorithm. All right, with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into today's topic the Citigroup ecosystem for credit cards and what those limitations or shortcomings might be. So when we think of the city ecosystem, you will often hear this compliment given. City is a great setup for people who only want one credit card issuer. And I agree with that. That's undoubtedly true. Um, when we think of the city ecosystem, we're thinking of cards like the city premier, the city custom cash, the city rewards plus. And I have those three cards. Obviously, I'm holding them up. Uh, instead of a trifecta, you can make it into a quadfecta by adding the city double cash card. However, I will ask you this question, students, to challenge your thinking a little bit. Of the people who watch my videos and the credit card content creator community at large, um, how many of those people are satisfied with only one credit card issuer? I don't know of very many. So... I think we need to take some time to consider how City would fit into someone's overall credit card strategy. And there are four content, or not content, four cons that I see. Um, one, you need three or four cards to optimize. Two, you get diminishing returns. Three, travel partners, and four, no big bonuses. And we'll go over all of those. So first, let's start off with the very first topic, uh, three or four cards to optimize. And this one will be real quick. 
I showed you the three cards that I have already. And of course, there is a fourth. There is the city double cash. Um, if somebody is only wanting one issuer and they're looking for simplicity, are they really going to be satisfied with having three or four credit cards or are they going to wish they only had one? And yes, I acknowledge the City Premier is something of a do-it-all card. Uh, 3x on travel, 3x on gas, 3x on grocery, 3x on dining. Um, but there are the limitations that we all kind of know of with that. One limitation is um, sensitivity to velocity and your number of credit cards. Um, I applied for the city double cash uh, in late December after getting the custom cash, which was the third part of my trifecta, in August, and I was denied. Now, who knows what the real reason is? They don't always reveal that, but um, I do feel like they are harder to get cards on. So uh, slowing down your velocity enough to get all four cards would be a bit tricky. Uh, I see Icarus is on board and has this question for me. Is slow mode necessary? This is already small enough audience members only. Uh, it's my first time. That's something I'll debate. I kind of wanted to avoid the things like, oh, hi, Bill. Hi, Frank. Hi, everybody. Uh, because this is mainly intended for those who are watching after the fact, although I'm very happy to have you on board. And I'll keep that in mind for future reference. Um, so we talked about, you know, needing the three or four cards. And, and that seems a little contradictory, you know, a great setup for people that want simplicity, but you have to have four cards to really max it out. So let's move on to my second point, which was the area of diminishing returns. And I think this is where we will spend uh, the lion's share of our time today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and help um, illustrate the point that I'm trying to get at here with math. You'll bear with me while I switch screens here. There we go. It's up now. Okay, so here is a spreadsheet that I put together called my earnings modifier spreadsheet. And this will go over a typical budget. And this is actually based on my budget from the past. So back in the year 2018, that was the last year before I started uh, heavily into the points and miles game. I actually, at the end of the year, looked back on the few credit cards I had and the spending there, enough to pin down how much I spent on the top 10 categories. And this is pretty much everything that you can put on a credit card somewhat easily. And here's the categories that I came up with. Dining, Amazon, gas, Walmart, grocery, telecom, which would be like cell phones, cable or internet, etc., office travel, bills, which is basically everything else that doesn't fit a category, and pharmacy. You might think to yourself, pharmacy is really high. Um, at the time, I had an HSA with like a, a high deductible, and every year you had to meet a certain amount. And our family actually did spend uh, $6,000 on pharmaceuticals that year due to various health needs in our family. This won't apply to everyone, but for us, this was our actual family budget in, in the year 2018. And in that year, um, $42,500, if I was really diligent, could put everything on credit cards. Um, the reason I haven't used last year's figures is because now with, you know, doing funny games like buying gift cards and those sorts of things, um, I don't necessarily mean manufactured spending, although that may be part of it, but it will also include things like buying Amazon gift cards repeatedly at an office supply store. It does kind of skew the results a little. So what I did was took my pre-credit card game budget and extrapolated that out to this year. And what I did was I went and found the um, official rates of inflation published by the government for 2019, 2021, 20, 22, and 23, and applied the modifier cumulatively to come up with this budget. So what was 
$42,500 in 2018 is now $52,981.18. I did round that off just for the sake of round numbers, everything ending in a $100 increment. So that's $53,000. I think that's pretty prototypical of an American middle class, usually a family with maybe high one income or average two income or some sort of merger of the two. You know, $53,000 a year in expenses that can be put on a credit card easily. So that would exclude mortgage or rent. That would exclude paying taxes, those sorts of things. Yes, I know uh, there are ways to do that, but I'm talking things that can easily be put on a credit card $53,000. All right. So now let's look at this column right here, which is the. And just for the sake of discussion, I started that out with two points per dollar on everything. So let's say someone decides to get a 2X Everywhere card that is a transferable currency. Maybe the Amex Blue Business Plus, uh, maybe the City Double Cash. I think for the sake of our illustration, we'll say the Capital One Venture card because um, that you know has transfer partners built in. You don't have to get another... Uh, issuer. I suppose the Blue Business Plus would as well. And when you take all these different categories times two points per dollar, this is not counting a sign-up bonus, but just everyday spending, you've got 149,000 points. Now, if you value that at one cent per point, that's uh, $1,494. So just by using a two everywhere card, this person has dramatically increased the value they're getting in the course of a year. Let's say this person was paying for everything with a debit card or checks or cash before that, just by simply getting a venture card, uh, $1,494, um, even if you take it as cash or just use it as the, I realize you can't technically cash out Capital One points, but let's say you use it for the travel eraser. You know, we went to Miami, Florida, and stayed in a hotel, and I just clicked the button to erase my travel purchases. Now, if that same person uh, was able to maximize somewhat uh, and get 1.5 cents per point, they'd be pulling down $2,200. And if they were able to very much maximize, they'd be pulling down almost, but not quite, $3,000 in value. So that's, that's a baseline there, and that's a starting point. Let's See what happens if this person modifies their behavior just a little bit. So if we look over here on the right, uh, you'll see I've listed seven specific credit cards. The Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Frame Flex, the Chase Inc. Cash, the City Custom Cash, which will only be used for gas, the American Express Blue Business Plus, the Venture card from Capital One, and the Saver One card from Capital One. I think you would agree with me that these are uh, pretty basic cards and pretty solid cards. Only two of them have an annual fee, the CSP and the Venture, and they're um, you know right around that $100 range. So we're not talking a big outlay to get value. Everything else is a no annual fee card. Just for the sake of discussion, let's say our hypothetical person gets these seven cards and starts applying to what they have. And I've already pre-calculated what those modifiers would change to. Instead of getting two points per dollar on everything, they now get these modifiers right here. And... Um, The points didn't really change at all. Did I do something wrong there? F2 times E31, F2 times E31, way down here. I'm sorry, class. This is very clunky. F three times E32. Oh, it's pasting from down here. So I didn't, I didn't need to do that already. Um, okay. I made a mistake earlier. I'm sorry. When I was talking about the two X points on everything, 
I should have realized that math was a little off because double 53,000 is not 149,000. This should be F2 times. Hey, you get to watch spreadsheets live and in action. This field here. All right, now let's fill downwards. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the original 2x on everything setup was getting these figures here. I was a little off on my original figures. So it ranged between 1,000 and 2,000 roughly, not between 1,500 and 3,000. My apologies. So that's what the original setup was. Now, if we go in and take our setup right here, this is our, our hard setup when the person decided to get a little more complicated. Um, this is what it comes out to right here, 137,000. And here's our three different numbers. But I have a graphic for us that will make that a little easier to figure out. Stop sharing the screen. There we go. Okay, so this was the 2x everywhere person. And at one cent per dollar, we had 1,060. One and a half, we had 1,590. And at two cents, we had 2,120. So if we switch over to the basic seven card setup, this person now has, if pulling down one cent per point, an extra $318 in value at 1.5, an extra 477. And at two cents per point, an extra $636 in value. So they have increased their value, certainly, but going from no rewards at all to 2x on everything was a much bigger jump. They have now diminished their rewards. The rewards are increasing, but going from nothing to 2x on everything is very lucrative. Going to this seven card base up, basic setup is only somewhat more lucrative. All right, back to the spreadsheet now, and we'll look at what happens if you add in that setup with City. Instead of having these modifiers here from our basic setup, we're going to erase those, and we're going to work in the City setup. Now, you're going to notice a lot of these modifiers end in point something. That's because the City Rewards Plus card gives you um, a 10% rebate on points redeemed uh, throughout the year. So up to 100,000 points. So if you're getting, let's just say, 3x on dining, you once you redeem it, it really becomes 3.3 because you get that extra 10%. So let's go through and review what we've changed. With our seven card setup, we already had three points per dollar with the Saver 1 or the CSP or the Freedom Flex. We're just going up to 3.3. Uh, Amazon 2.2, uh, because that's not really any specific category. Now, disclaimer here, you might be wondering, well, why didn't you give this hypothetical person an Amazon card? That's because that's a cashback only card. I could say things, the same thing about the Walmart card that was issued by Capital One. But again, that's cashback only. I think we could have a whole separate video on cashback versus points only versus hybrid. But for the sake of this discussion, I just want to show uh, what happens when you add the city setup with points. After all, I have to be able to have these different levels here. Uh, with grocery, you know, we already had the Saver 1 at 3x. We went up to 3.3 by adding the City Premier. Uh, telecom's not changing because the best one there continues to be the Ink Cash. Travel, you could make an argument whether or not we should because unlike the Sapphire Preferred, the Chase, or excuse me, the City Premier does not have travel protections. But say we do change that now at 3.3. Everything else moves from 2 to 2.2 because you got your double cash and your rewards plus combo. Pharmacy stays the same at 3x because you're not, uh, with your freedom, you actually get 3x at pharmacies. There's nothing that gives a pharmacy bonus category. Um, we did uh, not gain any, we only gained 0.5 uh, on gas because we were already using the custom cash as a cashback only a card or a standalone card. 
Um, yeah. Uh, now it's mixed into the whole trifecta thing. So you've got all the additional amount of points. So this person now has 149,000 points. And you can see here how that shakes out in terms of the value you might get. So take a look at the uh, printout that I made to show how this would shake out. So when we add in the city quadfecta, if you are getting one cent per point, you get an additional $117 in value, $117 in value adding those four whole cards uh, if you're getting one cent per point over that simple seven card setup. If you get a uh, 1.5 cents per point, you're getting $175 in additional value. If you get two whole cents per point, you're getting $233 in additional value. So basically somewhere between $100 and $200. Now, I'll let you decide if that's worth doing or not, but I'm going to ask you this. Is it worth adding a whole additional issuer and three or four additional cards to make somewhere between $100 and $200 in additional value over the course of a year? I would say that it's not. That's just my opinion. There's nothing special enough to make me think about that as a big win. I like to go for big wins. I like to chase the big fish. And I just feel like that's really not a big win. That's not worth getting a whole other issuer for. Now, uh, sign-up bonuses, yes. Obviously, chasing sign-up bonuses is still worth doing, including with City. And... Uh, again, we could have a whole nother lecture about this. In fact, we probably will someday. Um, but I think something that that exercise we just went through, the diminishing returns, makes clear is that chasing sign-up bonuses is going to get you a truckload more points than just layering on cards that you plan to use primarily for everyday spend. In other words, if your goal is just to get to a point where I have the perfect setup and I'm never going to apply for any additional cards, your earnings potential is going to kind of peak out pretty quickly. And I'm not sure how satisfying that's going to be. I will take just a, a moment to mention there is a YouTuber I ran across recently. His name is John Cannon and he does credit card content. He did a video in the not so distant past about city and why it just didn't really seem special to him. That video in part inspired this one. I just wanted to put some hard and fast numbers to it. So I'm sort of building on what he planted a seed in my head all about. All right, well, let's move on to the next topic, which is travel partners. And what does it offer? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well... <laughs> Professor Dugras, I mean, it does have travel partners. Don't you know that there are travel partners? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm totally aware that City has some transfer partners. And I have heard people say that City's transfer partners are criminally underrated. And I have even myself said that their transfer partners are somewhat underrated. However, you start to look at them not just as all by themselves, but in conjunction with the fact that you're probably going to have at least three, if not four other issuers in your wallet that have transferable currencies. I feel like there's some shortcomings. I will mention we all know that Wells Fargo is going to, oh, hey, Icarus, you read my mind. We all know that Wells Fargo is going to be entering the arena of transfer partners in the near future. And I have a feeling when it does, it's only going to bolster my argument even further because the Wells Fargo autograph card is a lot like the City Premier. And as of this moment, it has no annual fee, unlike the City Premier, which has a roughly $100 annual fee. All right, let's take a look at the transfer partners in a specific way. Here, share my screen again. All right, so here we have the Award Travel 101 Transfer Partner Matrix. We've got Chase, 
Amex City Capital One. City is going to be this third column here. It's kind of a, an orange color. So let's take a look at that and just see what jumps out at us. We don't have Aeroplan. That's a notice one they don't have because the other three big boys do. Avianca Life Miles, I've never used it. I've heard it's pretty good but you can also get it with Amex or Capital One. I don't know of anyone that uses Ava Air. I don't know of anyone that uses Singapore Airlines Chris Flyer. I guess I've seen one or two comments about it, but again, not unique. Everybody has that. Thai Royal Orchid, Orchid, Orchid? <laughs> never heard of it, never used it. Turkish Miles and Smiles. Certainly Frequent Miler has taught me that the trick to book uh, domestic United flights for cheap with miles and smiles exists. There's a lot of hassle. And I would argue um, Capital One has it. So if that's something you really covet, why not just use Capital One instead? I think the Venture X is a better keeper card. If you can manage to pair it with a Saver One, that would be great. Assuming the ability to move your Saver One dollars over to the Venture or Venture X remains. Scrolling down a little more here. Uh, the One World Partners, Asia Miles, don't really use it, but you can also get it with Amex or Cap One. Qantas, Amex or Cap One. Uh, Qatar, you can get with Amex. Missing British Airways and Iberia. <coughs> Sorry, folks, I'm losing my voice a little. Emirates, yes, great transfer partner, but look, everybody else has it. Etihad, two of the three others have it. Uh, JetBlue, two of the three others have it, although Amex's ratio is a little wonky. I don't personally use JetBlue because I don't live on the East Coast, and it just doesn't really fit me. Hotel transfer partners, I'll go in reverse order. Accor, I don't know anything about it, never used it. Wyndham, well, I do certainly use Wyndham. I'm interested in that for Vacasa and Cottages.com. Although I earn the vast, vast majority of my Wyndham points on my Wyndham Earners business card, 8x at gas stations, 5x at utilities. I don't really earn it on, I mean, I, I have on like one occasion transferred from one of these, I don't remember which one, over to Wyndham, but it was only when there was a like 20% bump. And even then it was a very, it was more of a topping off. I think I transferred 20,000 points. The one and only transfer partner that I think is kind of interesting is Choice Privileges. Choice is a hotel chain, and you can transfer your city points over to Choice at a one to two ratio. Now, you can also transfer it on Amex and Capital One, but only at a one to one ratio. Now, um, I have found some good bargains. I found a Comfort Inn, which isn't very exciting, um, for 20,000 points near an airport I have to stop at. And the only other thing that was even close was an IHG property that was 40,000 points. This Comfort Inn, I believe, was 20,000 points. And because it's one to two, I would only have to transfer over six, uh, excuse me, 10,000 of my transferable currency points. Uh, even though it sounds like a good deal, I've only used it for one sweet spot ever, and that was in Scandinavia. And, and most of us in this space, in the advanced points and miles space, uh, will acknowledge that Scandinavia has some amazing options for those city points if used on choice hotels. Uh, however, how often are you going to Scandinavia? Is it enough to set your entire strategy? Well, I kind of doubt it. Um, sorry, folks, I was looking for some different stuff here. Uh, I thought I had saved an email where I did some calculations on that, and now I'm not finding it. I certainly apologize. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. Sorry, awkward silence. Talk amongst yourselves. Which is more valuable, Wyndham or Choice? Aha, I found it. Okay, so the interesting thing is that um, 
City does have kind of a um, miniature version of transferable currencies. And that miniature version is that you can still transfer to like three transfer partners, even if you don't have the Premier. So let's just say you have the double cash or one of the other two. You can still transfer over to, I think it's Wyndham, Choice, and one other. I don't remember what the one other is. Interestingly, the transfer ratio, um, I can stop now so the buffering is a little better. The transfer ratio, if you have the junior version of City Points, is um, 1 to 1.5 with choice. So if you dump the City Premier and you just keep uh, one of the other cards, the junior version of their transfer partners, you can still transfer to choice at a 1 to 1.5 ratio. So you can still get in on some of that. I did the math, and if you were only using your city cards for choice hotels in order to justify the $95 annual fee on the city premier card. Uh, the amount of points that you would need to send over to choice every year would be 27,941 city points. So let's just round that off to 28,000 and we can make an unofficial rule here that if you're only using um, your city points for choice hotels, it doesn't make sense to keep the premier from an annual fee point of view unless you're going to be transferring at least 28,000 city points over to choice every year. Uh, yes, Icarus, I see your question. What's the junior transfer partner ratio for city to Wyndham? I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm very sorry. I think it's still one-to-one. -one. I think you still get all the same options. Now, if there was ever a bonus, would they still honor the bonus on the junior version? I don't know. All right, so class, we have covered three of the four cons. The last one is no big bonuses. Excuse me. Um... There are bonuses, and when I got the City Premier card, the bonus was 80,000 City Points, and um, I think right now it's 60,000, and it bounces back and forth between 60, 70, and 80. Um, so with that in mind, you might think to yourself, uh, well, that's a big bonus, du Graz. What are you talking about? Well, it's hard to continuously accrue City Points through sign-up bonuses. Uh, you got 20,000 here. You got 20,000 here. Sometimes, not always, you have 20,000 on the double cash. So if you do all three of those, that's 60,000. And you've got uh, somewhere between 60 and 80,000 here. Uh, City has the 48 month rule, which means if I cancel one of these cards and want to churn them again in the future, I have to wait at least 48 months before doing so. Um, City doesn't have any transferable currency business cards, or if they do, they're only grandfathered in or they're a piece of junk or something like that because you never, ever hear anyone talking about them. So you think of like American Express, and right now I'm racking up uh, 150,000 Amex points because I signed up for the business gold card. And I have to do $10,000 of spend in three months. That's a decent amount of money. It might be hard for some people, depending on your situation. Maybe it's easy. Um, but I'm going to get that one card. And then um, I can get a uh, something else, you know, 150,000 points. I've never personally had the Amex Platinum consumer card. So that's still out there on the table for me. I've never personally had the Amex gold card on the personal level. That's still out there on the table for me. Um, now, my wife has had the gold card. Uh, both my wife and my mom have had the um, platinum card. But my point is, I'm pretty far along in the game, and I've still got options with Amex, you know, on how to earn sign-up bonuses. So City doesn't really have that. There's no way, there's no good way to accumulate Lots and lots of city points. So 
it's a really minor player. Now, am I saying ditch all of your city cards? Not necessarily, but uh, maybe. Now, um, I've got my city premiere coming up for its first year renewal in, I think, February or March. So I'm going to have to make a decision on that. I really would like it if Wells Fargo would get their act together and do their transfer partner announcement before I have to make that decision because that would help me with that decision. But I might end up transferring my points out, you know, to some different places. I'll send a couple to Wyndham, a couple to Choice, a few to Flying Blue or something like that, and then downgrade it to another custom cache because I think the custom cache is a really good cache back card. And I can always use those junior version um, on choice. So seven and a half on choice on one category of your choosing per monthly cycle. Uh, yes, Icarus. Oh, says I have grandfathered city dividend, 5% rotating categories, cash back. Not thank you points. That's another city card. Uh, doesn't earn thank you points though. Thank you for pointing that out. And it's grandfathered. So a lot of people are not able to get it. So um, with that in mind, um, I also am tempted to just ditch City altogether. Um, I've talked about many times in the last year making my life simpler, fewer issuers. I don't get that much value out of it. Um, something I think about even with the City Custom Cash is it's a, it's a touch annoying that it's uh, capped that you can only earn a maximum of $500 per monthly cycle, 500 times 12 comes out to 6,000. So at most I'm, did I do that right? 500 is the spend. Okay, so yes, the spend. Uh, we're talking $6,000 of spend in a calendar year at 5X, that's 30,000 points. Now, 30,000 points a year isn't bad and it's nothing to sneeze at, but think about one sign-up bonus that you might get on something else. Uh, the Wells Fargo autograph, for example, got me 30,000 points, and that was just a bing, 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 I'm done kind of thing. You know, bang that out in about a month and a half. Uh, whereas with the custom cash, I have to be maximizing my spending every single month, um, which, you know, is definitely possible. A lot of families spend more than 500 on groceries. Maybe you drive a lot and you spend... 500 on gas or home improvement or something like that. But I think for most people, you're either quite a bit under or quite a bit over. You know, when I was talking about my budget, what I spend on gas is uh, $3,100 per year, uh, not counting like buying gift card stuff. That's around in the neighborhood of $250 a month. So I'm not even coming close to maximizing that out. If I use this just for gas, I'm only getting um, 15,000 points a year. Again, not terrible, but it doesn't excite me. It just doesn't feel like there's anything special about City. Well, I'm going to wrap up the class here. I will put a link to that video by John Cannon. I would encourage you to watch that. If you are a subscriber but not a member, consider joining the Dugras Diehards. Thank you, Icarus, for attending class today. And for anyone else who is attending later on on the uh, video version, if you are not a subscriber, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and click that thumbs up button. As always, may your spending be frugal and may your points be plenteous. Class dismissed.